Welcome to the driver's seat. We're in Spartanburg, South Carolina, home of BMW's manufacturing facility. It all started almost 20 years ago with the X5 and now has grown into a whole family of crossovers. You can see we have an X1 all the way up to an X6 and soon there will be an X7. But today we're here to talk about the second generation X4 Sport Activity Vehicle. The X4 retained many of its same characteristics as the first model, but it's grown. It's three inches longer. The wheelbase, 2.1 inches longer, and the overall width, 1.2 inches wider. I like to look at this vehicle as a baby X6, which really started everything for the sport activity vehicle, and I really like what they've done. In many ways, this is the perfect compromise for maybe a young family looking for a 4 Series Coupe and maybe an X3 SUV. They want something sporty that meets both of their needs. That's where the X4 comes in. There are two basic models for the X4. The X30i that we're driving today and earlier is the M40i, that's the high performance version. The big difference is the powertrain. You have a four cylinder turbo on the 30i that produces 248 or 252 horsepower, depending on uh, which specifications you look at. This is an international launch and there's a little discrepancy, but it's somewhere in that neighborhood. But there's no questioning the M40i. 355 horsepower. Uh, that car is a rocket. Both are mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission and both have standard X-Drive all-wheel drive. If nothing else, the BMW X4 makes a great noise, great exhaust note, especially in sport mode. This is a fun car. Starting price is 50,000 for the 30i and 60,000 for the M40i we're driving right now as tested about $71,000. The more time I spent in the X4, the more I thought about why did BMW build this? My first thought was it was a scaled down version of the X6, which was targeted at executives uh, who didn't want a family crossover, wanted something more of a personal sporty uh, coupe crossover. And that's why they made that vehicle. But with the X4, I think it's completely different. I think it's basically a family or maybe an individual who is stuck between a two-door coupe like a two series or four series and an X3. They want the practicality of the X3, but the sportiness of a two-door coupe. And while this is not a two-door coupe, it does give them the, um, you know, the styling and the functionality that they want from both of those vehicles. One thing we don't like about the X4 is that rear blind spot, because of the roof line uh, and the massive C pillar, also a very large A pillar, uh, it does have some blind spots and it takes some getting used to. My co-driver didn't like the steering. I don't think he likes any uh, electronic steering. I didn't mind the steering. I thought it was good. We were on some very challenging roads. And to be fair, I don't think that 99.9% uh, .9 of X4 buyers, owners, are ever going to challenge their vehicles that way. Now, if you do want to go have some fun and treat this not quite like a rear-wheel drive car, but s something that lets you um, let you get a little silly with the car, you can do that. And we demonstrated that on BMW's test track. And that's a testament to BMW for having the confidence uh, to put us on the track and essentially a crossover. Uh, I mean, this, this has a lot of the shared components from the X3, but as you can see, it's uh, much more dynamic in its handling. One of the things you can get on the M40i is the adaptive suspension, which makes a big difference. There are a lot of ways to customize uh, the various modes, and uh, we, we tested them all. I realize most people are gonna get in this vehicle, start it up, and drive. Might use paddle shifters occasionally, but I don't think it's going to be uh, fully tested the way we did. Overall, I think the X4 is very engaging. It's also very comfortable. These are new seats in the X4, and you know they feel great, very comfortable, very supportive. They have new side bolsters. So uh, a lot of improvements over the outgoing model. Not that the outgoing model was even around that long, but uh, it was here, and 
made somewhat of an impact, enough of an impact that BMW was willing to you know, bring on a second generation, and why not? One of the things I like about the newer BMWs is that you not only have Apple CarPlay, but it's now wireless Apple CarPlay. And that's a nice feature, so you don't always have to be tethered. BMW is clearly on a crossover mission. X7 is coming early in 2019, which is going to complete the entire family. We'll have a total of seven. Certainly the X-Drive 30i is the more practical vehicle to get. For about $55,000, you can get a nicely equipped one and you, you'll be very comfortable and very happy with it. Uh, 248 horsepower, it kicks in at a pretty, pretty low RPM, about 1500. So you can have access to all that power at a very low range. And that's what you want. Uh, I'm not saying you don't need 355 horsepower, but um, you know, if you can spend the extra money, you'll, you'll, be, you'll be nicely rewarded with that extra oomph. It's certainly faster, makes a nicer exhaust note. Um, it's just a different vehicle, uh, but I expect about 70 to 80 percent to be uh, the four-cylinder variant. Manufacturers are always looking at improving how you access the cargo area. Of course, you have your key fob and there's a button inside the vehicle, but accessing it from the exterior is now hidden behind the BMW logo. Very clever of BMW. BMW is firmly committed to the X4 and their entire crossover lineup. In fact, this plant behind me is now 100% dedicated to producing crossovers and it has the capacity to do 450,000 units a year. Many of those are exported to other countries. Very impressed with the second generation X4. It's a great handling vehicle, a great looking vehicle, and I think it fits a nice niche in the BMW crossover family. I'm Ron Doran. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on the driver's seat.